Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the Ford Mustang EcoBoost. This is a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, 310 horsepower, 320 pound feet of torque. And you know what the important question is that you're probably all wondering, what's it like compared to a Dodge Viper? Because I was just in the Dodge Viper uh, just before driving this. And so you know I can say visibility is improved, uh, it's more spacious. Uh, I might even say that the seats are more comfortable in comparison to the Dodge Viper doesn't sound quite as good, you know, it's got about a fourth of the liters of a Dodge Viper, uh, half the horsepower, half the torque, uh, and I'm just kidding about all this, there's no reason to compare this to a Dodge Viper. Um, now, moving on, so I did drive the Ford Mustang EcoBoost with the automatic and it was also a convertible, so it was significantly heavier, and it also, there goes our receipt, uh, it also, besides being heavier, had less aggressive gearing. And so with the less aggressive gearing and with added weight, of course, handling suffers and especially acceleration suffers. So this has more aggressive gearing and on top of that, it also has more aggressive final drive. Uh, so, you know, it's a bit more sport oriented, definitely more uh, performance oriented, more acceleration oriented. So you're going to get much better acceleration out of this than if you go with the automatic. So let's just wait briefly here, uh, to get a little space see if we can feel what that's like. So once you get into that boost, once you cross your boost threshold and, you know, eliminate the turbo lag, it's got some decent punch to it. It's actually pretty fun. Driving in front of me, we've got the FRS and the GTI, or no, rather the Golf R, and then behind me is a Mazda MX-5. Uh, you know, this is kind of in a similar price range to those, so it, it's certainly something you can compete with versus that FRS up there. You know, this is a lot more weight, like 700 pounds maybe, um, and then uh, 775, I believe, and then, you know, that MX-5 significantly lighter than this. Uh, but this has significantly more torque than both of those vehicles, so quite a bit of power in it. The steering actually does feel a little bit better to me, I believe, than the automatic convertible version that I drove. You know, you take out some weight and you're gonna add a little bit. It still does have a little bit of a delay, it feels like, as far as the responsiveness. Um, you know, a light weight to it, but that said, I just came out of the Dodge Viper, which has an extremely heavy steering wheel. Uh, pretty much everything's fairly heavy. As far as the manual transmission, you know, it's got a nice notchy feel to it. It's kind of, you know, yes, I'm in gear. It gives you that satisfaction of a gear shift. It's not that, you know, super smooth fluid motion. It's, don't get me wrong, it's uh, certainly easy to shift, uh, but it does have a notchiness to it. Clutch pedal feel, uh, it seems to be using the whole range of the clutch pedal, not very limited. Uh, like I was in that Viper and it's all right at the very edge and it's got a really long throw. This has got a shorter throw in it and you know, it's not, uh, it's, it's using most of that range. So it's actually got a pretty decent clutch pedal feel to it. I like that. I also like the gear shift as well. I'd say somewhat similar to a Subaru WRX or an STI uh, in the feel to it. Maybe just a little bit lighter uh, and a little bit smoother. Not quite as uh, rough and heavy as the uh, Subaru six-speed manual transmissions. Now visibility out the back was a complaint when I was in the EcoBoost convertible. Not an issue at all with the back here. Nice large window back there. Plenty of visibility out the rear view mirror. So I wouldn't complain about that in the slightest. It's actually pretty nice. And as far as the seats, equally comfortable. These seem like they're the exact same seats I had in that other version. Uh, very nice leather, decently soft, and a good amount of cushion in them. Now you do have some artificial noise piped in. You know, a lot of the cars are doing that here, which is just unfortunate. Even like the Lexus RCF has a speaker in it these days. So it's kind of unfortunate that's the route things are going, but you know, everyone wants quiet interiors, but they want engine noise as well. And so that's kind of the sacrifice that's being made, whether or not it's for the best. That Jaguar F-Type though, however, you have the best of both worlds. Phenomenally loud exhaust system and a quiet interior, and it's not artificial. It's a pretty scenic drive. We're at Mount Rainier. If you haven't checked out Mount Rainier National Park, you certainly should do it. It's a beautiful place. And there's mountain goats. Well, there it is. There it is. You know, you do have some turbo lag. It's not immediate once you put your foot down. You'd have to wait a little bit for the boost to build up. But once it does, 
it's got plenty of torque. It's plenty enough to sit you back in your seat. So overall, you know, I drove the automatic Mustang with the EcoBoost engine, and I was kind of underwhelmed with the amount of power it had. Uh, it just kind of felt like a big boat, and, you know, I thought, you know, it needs to be a... I wouldn't say it necessarily needs to be a... There's still some turbo lag. I did drive the V8 earlier today, and it's significantly more punchy. You know, it, it's way more torque, and you definitely feel it, and it does feel right. I'll admit that. But I think in this form, in the fastback form, manual transmission, more aggressive gearing, uh, you know, and a more aggressive final drive and less weight. It's actually a pretty fun car to drive. Uh, the steering feels slightly improved over the automatic version uh, with the added weight and the convertible. So overall, it, you know, it's pretty much better in every way than that version and it would certainly be my recommendation if you're going for performance, uh, which is pretty obvious considering the pricing of the convertible. So start at a reasonable price you can get into them for around 25,000 26,000 uh, and then into the premium for a little under 30 and yeah it's certainly a fun car to drive so thank you guys for watching if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below